So I have a question from uh, a student named Kostup Tripathi. He is a student of class 12 and uh, he writes, Sir, as we study that product of slope of perpendicular lines is minus 1. But if we consider a line parallel to x axis and a line parallel to y axis, then according to the above statement, 0 into infinity is minus 1. The slopes are 0 for the line parallel to the x-axis and infinity for the line parallel to the y-axis and so m1, m2 is 0 into infinity which should be minus 1 according to the formula. So here he is very uncomfortable and says that please do clear my misconceptions. So very nice question and uh, I enjoyed solving it. So let us work on it. Okay, so let me take uh, x axis and y axis and I just take the line here itself. This is one line, this is one line and this is another line and then the angle is 90 degree and uh, uh, therefore that m1, m2 should be equal to minus 1 according to the formula. Now if you see what is m1, what is m1? m1 is tan theta where theta is the angle of the line with the x axis. So for this line, for this line m which I call m1 will be tan of 0 and that will be 0 and for this line this is 90 degree angle. So it is it was theta equal to 0 here, it is theta equal to 90 here. So m2 will be equal to uh, tan of 90 degrees. Which which is popularly written as infinity. Now the question is infinity is not a number. Infinity itself is not a number but it has a property of a number and that property is that it can be compared with any number smaller or larger or equal to. If you have two numbers you can always ask which one is smaller, which one is larger or are both equal. So infinity can be compared with a number in this sense and we always say that infinity is larger than all of the numbers but infinity itself is not a number. So this statement has a inherent complexity and the complexity is much more because if I take a line which is just close to this uh, y-axis but not exactly along the y-axis or parallel to the y-axis but a small angle let us say here, a very small angle and this small angle can always be reduced and reduced and reduced. We will not go to 90 degree but we can go as close to 90 degree as we wish and see how much is this tan theta, this tan theta. So now this tan theta will be, if you draw a perpendicular, this will be a perpendicular, this will be base and therefore tan theta which is p by b will be large positive number, positive large number. Large because this perpendicular is very high as you come here, here, here as compared to the base. So p by b will be very large as you come closer and closer to the y axis. But it is positive, p is positive, upward is positive, downward is negative, b is positive towards right, towards the x axis, uh, x direction, it is uh, positive, opposite it is negative. So both are positive and therefore this is positive and large. But if you take a line very close to y axis, but on the other side, on the other side, this side. Then if you drop a perpendicular and this becomes B and this becomes P, then for this line, for this line tan theta, if you write this is negative and large, negative and large because the base is now towards left. So this is negative, this is positive, you are in the second quadrant, tan theta is negative and large because this p is very much larger than this small b. And I can come as close to y axis as I wish and this ratio will keep increasing, so very large. So it is in fact going to minus infinity, 
negative and then the large, large, large in magnitude. And here it is plus infinity. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, as you cross this y-axis, there's a huge discontinuity. There's a huge discontinuity. It goes from plus infinity to minus infinity. And therefore, you cannot really decide what is 1090 degrees. What is 1090 degrees? 1090 degrees itself is undefined. And if I go through limits, that okay, what happens if theta approaches 90 degree? If you approach from the less than 90 side, then you see that it is increasing, 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 10 theta is increasing in magnitude, always positive. But if you approach this 90 from the other side, then you find that tan theta is negative and then large, 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 large. There's a huge discontinuity here. So you really cannot define. Nothing of that sort here. Nothing of that sort here. If you take a very small angle like this, very small angle theta like this. So your slope m, which you say, tan of theta with a negative sign, it is this, it is negative small number, negative small number. And as you go towards x-axis more, 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 this will go to zero. This will approach it so Here it is zero. And then if I am at this side, again, again it becomes positive, but then it has just crossed this zero smoothly. From negative, it is becoming less magnitude, less magnitude, it becomes zero here, then slightly increases. So there's no discontinuity out here. So M1 can be well defined. This is zero. This is zero for X axis. This is zero, but M2 is not defined. Does it mean I cannot say M1, M2 equal to minus 1 for this set of perpendicular lines, one along the x-axis, one along the y-axis? Interestingly, you can. You can still. Why? How? Just like there is no discontinuity here. There is no discontinuity even if you take this y-axis and go from left side to right side, there is no discontinuity. in m1 into m2, m1 into m2, there's a huge discontinuity in m2 and no discontinuity in m1, but m1, m2 is again continuous, this is very interesting. How? How it is that? You have to draw perpendicular lines. Suppose you take one line here and the perpendicular line is here. So what happens, what happens, this is your let us say theta 1, remember tan theta 1 will be negative and this is let us say this will be your theta 2 or uh, this let us call this as theta 2, we go by the standard notation, this is theta 2. So m1 is minus tan theta 1 and m2 is tan theta 2. And uh, I am not taking theta 2 equal to 90 degrees. So I can do usual trigonometry, usual algebra. And m1 times m2 will be minus of tan theta 1. And then tan theta 2 will be what? Tan of 90 degrees. And uh, yeah, 90 degrees minus theta 1. And that will be cot and then it will be 1 and it will be minus 1. So as long as you are of in this uh, picture, you, the line is uh, in the first quadrant here and in the fourth quadrant here, M1, M2 is minus 1. Now if you rotate it and then take it on the other side, what happens? If you take it on the other side, let me do it here. So now my first line is here, it's a small angle, very small angle. I am drawing large because of my own limitations and second line is here, okay, second line is here. So now you have this angle, this is theta 2, 
and this is theta 1. This is theta 1 from the x-axis and this is theta 2. So now if you ask what is m1, m2, you again get minus 1 because this tan theta 1 is here, tan theta 2 is negative. So this will be minus here and then tan theta 2 you will write and then you will use that formula. This is 90 degree etc. and it will be minus 1. So you take this or you take this. In both cases, m1, m2 is minus 1. As long as you are not taking theta 1 equal to 0 and theta 2 equal to uh, 90 degrees. But there is no discontinuity for this picture also and for this picture also. You can always uh, say that, okay, let me reduce this theta. It is here. This goes here. This goes here. This goes here. This goes here this goes here, then this goes here, smoothly m1, m2 will remain minus 1 all the time except that theta 2 equal to 90 degree. And that is how we say that in the limit, in the limit theta 2 approaches 90 degrees from left side as well as for right side. In both cases m1, m2 is minus 1. And therefore, the limit of m1, m2 as theta 2 tends to 90 is also minus 1. And therefore, we accept that for, for all conditions, this uh, m1, m2 is minus 1. So, that is the mathematics of it.